Well, dyspeptic symptoms are some of the most common types of problems that gastroenterologists deal with. So people come in with complaints of upper abdominal pain, fullness after they eat a meal, nausea, vomiting. And so the, the fundamental question always comes up, should you just treat these people with medications aimed at uh, various underlying abnormalities uh, in the hopes that their symptoms will get better, or should you do testing? For individuals that have typical dyspeptic symptoms and have warning signs or alarm features, so for example, uh, they're vomiting, there's evidence of bleeding, um, there's weight loss, uh, the symptoms are getting more severe and more refractory, I think those patients should get an upper endoscopy to make sure there's no structural explanation for their symptoms, like an ulcer or esophagitis or cancer, God forbid. Um, but after that, probably trying to empirically treat is the most cost-effective way to go. Um, now, here's the thing. The empiric therapies that we have available to us are acid suppression, so things like proton pump inhibitors, testing and treating for H. pylori infection, or prokinetic therapy, that is therapy aimed at accelerating um, emptying of the stomach. None of them work that well, unfortunately. So um, with those various therapies, if you're lucky, you might make about half, maybe 60% of those patients better. Um, I'd, say, I'd say probably optimistically two-thirds, which means, though, that there's a substantial minority of patients that don't get better with those standard therapies. And in that circumstance, I do think you have to do some additional testing. Yeah, I think it's important not to think of it that way in the sense that there, there's getting from point A to point B which from a cost effectiveness standpoint and just playing a numbers game in terms of the likelihood of making people better, um, that's gonna be those three things we talked about. So think, thinking about something like a proton pump inhibitor, or checking for H. pylori infection, maybe thinking about, um, maybe thinking about a prokinetic like metoclopramide or domperidone, uh, or even uh, in some patients if they come in and there's clearly a, a significant anxiety component, um, stress component, maybe thinking about something like behavioral therapy in addition to medical, medical therapy. Another thing that, you know, in the symposium we touched on a little bit um, is, is diet. You know, diet can play a big role in these symptoms as well. And, and we're learning more and more as time goes on about the potential role of diet um, certainly in irritable bowel syndrome, but also in upper GI symptoms. You know, um, Dr. Camilleri showed a, a data from a study that was published in our journal, the American Journal of Gastroenterology, that um, very nicely demonstrated that dietary intervention, that is taking a pureed diet, was much better tolerated by gastroparesis patients than a standard diet. You know, so there are clearly things that you can do with diet that can help patients with upper GI symptoms. It's very frustrating. I mean, obviously, all of us went into this with the, the primary motivation being to help our patients. And I think there's nothing that's more frustrating for a physician than feeling as helpless as a patient does in regards to helping them with their symptoms. You know, and, and it really is about making a proper diagnosis and, and helping with the symptoms because you can't do one without the other.